What's going on ladies and gentlemen? This is Saris here and today I'm bringing you guys once again another smite god guide and this guide will be for Anubis the Egyptian god of the dead. Anubis is a ranged mage caster who has insane burst as well as a single target stun to help defeat his enemies. We're going to be talking just a little bit here about Anubis's passive ability as well as his activated skills. First up we have Sorrow. All of Anubis' abilities reduce the enemy's magical protection by 12 for 3 seconds. That's pretty nice. Um, you can, you obviously are going to be buffing yourself with that. Um, the more abilities that the that you hit players with, the more you're going to drop their, their magic defense. Um, this will also help you if you're laning with another mage or during team fight phases, all that kind of good stuff. You'll be, you know, helping yourself out as well as your teammates, especially the ones that do magic damage, of course. All right, for his number one, or his first activated ability, which is Plague of Locusts. A Plague of Locusts bellows forth from Anubis's mouth, smothering all enemies in the area and doing 95 plus percentage of your magical damage every 0.5 seconds for three seconds. And that is this cone right here. I'll show you guys just a second. He just basically just like that sprays a bunch of locusts out so this is a cone aoe and does a lot of damage okay next up his number two is mummify anubis fires a bandage projectile mummifying his target for two seconds that's what this looks like it's just a very fast moving projectile that um you know it can be difficult to hit at times especially if a player which if they're smart they will realize uh you know that you're Anubis and that you could potentially try and stun them, so they're going to try and get out of it. So, you know, you have to learn how to lead this, all that kind of good stuff. Um, but this is just what it looks like. Like that right there. Stuns them for two seconds. All right. And... His third activated ability is Grasping Hands. Anubis calls for help from the underworld as hands penetrate the ground and claw at his enemies, doing 70 percentage of your magical damage every 0.5 seconds and slowing the enemies by 30% for 2 seconds. So, this is just a big circle, a placeable, you know, you can move it around AoE like this. You can kind of put it back there, up here, however you want to do it, like that. It's a slow and it does magical damage over time. All right, now let's take a look at his ultimate ability, or his number four activated ability, which is Death Gaze. Anubis focuses all of his energy into a piercing gaze, doing 100 plus percentage of your magical damage to all enemies in the path up to 70 feet away every 0.3 seconds for three seconds. Now this is the Slayer of Gods. Like this thing right here, if you see Anubis doing this and you're not a tank, boy, you better watch your butt because things are going to happen things are going to die it's not going to be a good time for you unless you're the one playing the anubis in which case it'll be a very good time for you but um i'll show you guys what that looks like here in just a second it's um it kind of starts upward and then it, it it starts at his eyes and pierces down towards the ground um and it goes 70 feet apparently so let's see if we can get this manticore in a stun real quick just so i can give you guys uh, if I don't die here actually all right there it is that's the ultimate just that that piercing gaze you can see the green sort of lights no don't kill me uh, the green lasers coming from his eyes that's death gaze and that does a whole lot of damage all right now that we've looked at all the skills that Anubis has to offer, I'm just going to kind of let you guys know the order in which that I level up the skills. Now, when uh, the first skill I take is his three, which is Grasping Hands. After that, I take one point in Plague of Locusts. Um, and notice I don't grab the stun at level one or level two. Uh, so be sure to play it um, fairly passively to start with if you're if you're midding. Um, you know, you'll get to level three pretty quick. It won't matter all that much. Just, but just know that um, with that, you're going to be a little bit more susceptible to a possible gank or whatever if you don't have that stun. So, at level three, I do grab the stun, and then after that, I alternate between the three 
and the one, which would be the grasping hands and the plague of locusts. Now, of course, that doesn't count his ultimate. His ultimate is always the top priority. That's your big damage dealer. That's the one that you're going to want to make sure that you level up whenever possible. So the priority essentially is we're going to max our four whenever possible. Other than that, we're going to go back and forth between the grasping hands and the plague of locusts, and then we're going to throw the rest of them into the, um, the stun at the end. All right, now we're going to be talking about a little bit about the item build that I choose for Anubis and the way that I like to build him. Now, a little dis disclaimer to start off with. Now, not everyone likes the same build. People prefer to play gods totally differently, which is totally understandable. But just know that this is how I choose to play An Anubis, and it tends to work out very well for me. So this is um, how I do it. Now, to start off with... What I generally do, um, going mid lane most of the time, because this is kind of what this guide is for. Generally, um, a lot of times Nubis will go mid lane. Now, if not, you c you can try and go with another caster, as I mentioned previously. Um, but for the most part, this stuff will stay the same. I'm going to start off with one Boots of the Magi and one Obsidian Shard, as well as one Health Potion. Now this allows us to have some mana regen and still be able to do some decent damage to start off with because we do have that magical penetration from the Obsidian Shard. Um, and essentially overall, this is what the, my build will look like. I bought one point in each item um, just to show you guys what, the, uh, what my build actually does look like. So after that, I'm going to focus on maxing out the Obsidian Shard as well as the Boots of the Magi. Once I finish the Boots of the Magi and the Obsidian Shard up to level 3, I'm going to go ahead and start working on Gem of Isolation. I'm going to be trying to build that all the way up. This is very helpful as the passive effect you have the enemies hit by your abilities will move 35% slower for 2 seconds. That is very powerful. Um, you already have your Grasping Hands, which slows down an enemy. Um, or any enemies that happen to be in it, but this will also make it to your locust will be slowing enemies down and your ultimate Which this is very important because it's it's is um, Anubis's ultimate can be difficult to aim as well as very easy to avoid Especially if you're running away from him be just because it has a limited range and the way you have to kind of move to uh, Aim it up. It just you know, it can be sometimes um, difficult to keep them in your line of sights as far as that goes. Gem of Isolation goes a long way to help you deal with that situation. And also the defensive item that I have that I choose, um, it's a very powerful defensive item, I think. Um, Hide of Leviathan. It gives you physical protection, magical protection, health, and mana. So you get the whole kit and caboodle with one item slot. Now, generally I play Anubis as a squishy champion, which or a squishy god, which he is a squishy god, um, you just have to know how to go about playing him to do it this way. Now, some people may want to build him a little bit tankier, um, but this is my sort of glass cannon-ish build, um, except that I do get the high the Leviathan. Now, depending on if you're just getting destroyed, you know, you, you've picked up some deaths and you want to make sure that you, you can survive a little longer. Maybe you're new to playing Anubis. That's understandable, of course, because every new god that you're going to try, there's going to be difficulties, you know, getting to know them, their abilities, their strengths and weaknesses, and all that kind of good stuff. So, at any point in the build, you want to start throwing in Hide the Leviathan in there, that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly understandable, especially, like I said, if you're newer to playing Anubis, which if you're watching a guide on Anubis, you probably are, because if you're a pro, then hey, why would be watching a guide? But anyway, so that was my little rant on that. So that can be thrown in at any point. I generally get it later on in the game. That's why I have it over here on the sixth slot. But, you know, you can get it uh, wherever you see fit. As well as if you if you say you're you're leaning against a magical carry and you've fed a few times and you're thinking that uh, they're going to be the major issue and they don't have much physical damage, go right ahead and grab uh, some sort of magic protection item, something like that. That's perfectly fine as well. If you don't think the armor would help you much, that's fine too. But that's you know that's just kind of my defensive item slot. And generally, all things being equal, I will go with the hide of the Leviathan just because it gives me a little bit of everything. All right, now. We've got a gem, we've got our boots, and we've got our city and shard here. Next, we're going to go into the Book of Thoth, which is just a great overall mage item. You've got your magical power, your banner, and your MP5. Now, when you get it up to three stacks, it's just going to be a massive amount of magical power. That's 100 
And that's just that's just a lot of magical power. I mean, what's not to like about that when you're Anubis and your your burst is quite insane? And um, that's what your role is in team fights is to be able to burst down like insanely fast. You blow all your all your stuff and pick up some kills and weaken uh, a few enemies uh, to as much as possible. All right, moving on. Rod of Tahuti, again, the same situation as the Book of Thoth. It's just going to give you a tremendous amount of magical power. 125 magical power. You've got some MP5, but the big kicker on this is the Passo, which increases magical power by 25%. Now imagine, you know, you've got whatever couple hundred at least by now two three hundred um magical power and you add 125 to that and then you you take an extra 25 percent of all your magical power added up and that's what the that this is going to give you the rod so that's why that item is very important on mages i i get it on most all my mages um especially the the ones that i get that i build more of a class glass cannon style of build so then the last slot, as I already mentioned, is the defensive item, which all things being equal as far as other team goes, would be the Hide Leviathan. Now going over abilities, um, I think one of the most underrated items, and I think it's not nearly as underrated as it used to be, um, one of the most underrated skills that you can buy is Heavenly Agility. It's a 35% sprint on a 60 second cooldown and it's an AOE sprint so you can use it to initiate team fights or to run away or anything like that but the good thing is that you can you can give that same sprint to the rest of your team so it's a it's quite nice uh, other than that you are a very squishy god and the way I build him he does not get very tanky so I get the Aegis Amulet using this item causes you invulnerable to all damage for two seconds however you're unable to move or take action during this time so that's just something, you know, to help you possibly get out of uh, trouble. You know, um, if you're getting focused down, you can try and pop that and hope that your teammates can save you at some point in there. You know, maybe, um, I don't know, you'll have them make a good escape or whatever, but uh, maybe they'll move on to someone else, start focusing them. And then the last item slot is kind of up for the bait. Um, Sometimes, I don't know, if you finish your build, a lot of times the games are going to end before you finish your build anyway, so I don't really normally end up getting three items. Um, you can get Girdle of Might, which just gives you, it's like a steroid, it gives you 20 plus 20 physical and magical uh, damage for 10 seconds. Um, you also can have, you can get the other sprint, which is just a single sprint that lasts longer, but it's on a longer cooldown. Um, you got purification beads if they have a lot of disables and just using your Aegis amulet isn't enough you can also get the purification beads for that little bit of extra way to get out of enemy disables alright guys now we're going to talk a little bit about practical gameplay and using your skills and abilities to your advantage while you're laning and while you're going for a kill and all this kind of great stuff now to start with when you're at lower levels you're just going to want to pop down your grasping hands as much as your mana can allow try to get your enemy lane in it your enemy lane god into the the three because it does slow them and so you can get a, a decent amount of damage in the, but just watch out for the creeps turning on you and attacking you now um, once you get your you, your say your level three now for the most part before your level five you're going to want to be fairly passive maybe pop up pop down your three and kind of get out of there do a little bit of damage if you're feeling brave you can also try and get in there and pop your one off um but for the most part, you're not going to be able to secure a kill, but you can do a lot of damage from level 3 by popping down your 3, then stunning, and then hitting them with your locust. Now, this is the order I generally choose to do it. You can also go for a stun, then put your 3 down, but the, what I don't like about that is the reaction time that if you stun, you have to then say, okay, did I stun or did I miss? Okay, I stunned. Now I can put my 3 down. So... On the good side, though, if you miss your stun, you don't waste the three skill. But if you hit it, there's going to be a little bit less damage done because of the reaction time. They're going to be able to get out of it a little bit quicker. So generally what I do is try and place them right in the middle of my three, hit them with the stun. And then at that point, I can go ahead and decide if I want to retreat or do I want to hit them with my Plague of Locusts. Now, if I hit them with my Plague of Locusts, it's going to do a lot of damage. But then you have to start worrying about, you know, creeps. But something like this... Like that, and you're not gonna get a kill generally. Now the only reason I did so much damage is because I've been I've been whomping on creeps a lot here and I've gotten a lot of gold and all that kind of stuff. But normally you wouldn't do that much damage. 
but what you would do is, you know, take them down maybe to half or something like that. But you want to keep that damage on them and don't, you know, they're going to have pots and everything like that most likely. But just let them, you know, think that they're okay, but keep them semi-low if you kind of catch my drift. And then you once you hit level 5 and above, you're going to be going for the ultimate Anubis burst combo, which... How I do, like I said, you can stun first, but what I like to do is put the three down, then stun, then go for your your ultimate, which is your death gaze. Now, it's going to look something like this. I'm going to let this creep wave push just so that way, because I, I am squishy, I don't want to get hit by the phoenix necessarily. But you could just be la-da-da-da-da, not really, you know, just kind of hitting creeps, okay? Then you come up. Boom, boom, boom. Just like that. You put down your three, you stun them in the three, and then immediately pop your ultimate. Don't don't waste time um, with your Plague Locust because with your Plague Locust, you will, you know, it, it does a lot of damage too, but by that time, they're most likely going to be retreating and, you won't, and you're going to pop your ultimate, but it's going to be too late because they're going to be running away. So that is that combo right there. Um, if you can put a little preliminary damage down, like I was saying with your other combos, that combo right there is gonna kill almost any god that isn't doesn't isn't like far levels above you or have a tremendous amount of of magic resist. That's just an unbelievable amount of burst going down. Um, if they do manage to survive, they're gonna be hurting severely bad and most likely have to back. So it's just a real, real insane amount of burst. And so if you were going to go, let's see what I would do if I put down my three, then I stun, and then I do the locust, then I go for the ultimate, um, which I have 10 second cooldown left on that. It's just, it just allows them to be able to escape, and you won't get as much damage in with ult. You still probably, while well, here, I might still get the kill, but I have to get in a little bit closer and see uh, it just, you know, he was able to, wasn't able to escape, but he was able to get out of the area, um, taking less damage than when I just went straight for the ultimate. Now, in team fights, it's going to be a different situation. Um, as Anubis, you are going to be very squishy, though, especially the way that I build Anubis. You're going to be squishy. So what you're going to want to do, you're not going to want to be on the forefront of any kind of team fight type of situation. You're going to want to be um, going in from the side. You know, if your teams are facing off in the middle lane, you might want to be kind of hanging out around in the jungle a little bit, like off to the side, waiting for things to erupt. You come in from the side, and you can either decide if you want to target someone specific, or you just want to plop down your AOE in the middle of them, try and get off a stun on one of their their biggest damaging uh, gods is the best way to do it. You know, so that way they you'll be taken out of commission for a few seconds as well as slowed inside your in your grasping hands and at that point you have to decide do you want to stick around uh, long enough and try and put out your cone aoe or do you want to just go straight for the ult ultimate to go for a kill if they're all clumped up you can go for the locusts and really do just a lot of damage as well as debuffing them so that way your other mages can also do a lot of damage um, if there's somebody that you really want to target specifically you can go right into the ultimate so the, the, you know, what you want to do is a little bit different because in team fights, AOE damage is very devastating in this game. You know, you combine your some of your stuff with a couple of Agni's ultimates and maybe, uh, you know, who knows what a Zeus or or a Hebo ult or something like that. It's just it's absolutely crazy, um, the AOE damage that can be done in this game. So putting down your three and then one can be quite devastating in a team fight situation now don't get me wrong though your ultimate death gaze can also be an aoe of sorts as in that it can hit multiple targets at the same time um if they're in line the beam doesn't stop the beam just keeps going for that 70 feet so it can hit multiple gods and or creeps at the same time and do the same amount of damage to all of them and be just as devastating as if you were only hitting one target with it one other thing to note about the Mummify, which is his number two spell, his stun, is it will go right through creeps to hit uh, the target god. So if you do a situation like this, like there, you still get your stun off, even though there's creeps in a way. Now this is, of course, something that you want to keep in mind because it can allow you, you know, some, some abilities will hit creeps while some will not. So knowing this allows you to be able to stun in different situations that you might not have realized were possible before. 
All right, guys, I think that basically covers my guide for Anubis, the God of the Dead. If you guys liked it, please give me a thumbs up, comment on it. Let me know if there's anything, you know, maybe a different way that you play Anubis. I'm, I'm open to all different types of play styles. I know that what I do is not always 100% the best possible way to do it. Um, I have the way that I like to do it, and I know you guys probably have yours. So if you guys find something that, that works, I'm definitely not opposed to hearing about it. So drop me a comment if that's the case. If not, just subscribe, and I would appreciate it, and have a good day, and I'll catch you guys later.